My name is Nur Ifaria, Minti Mama Iqbal. I'm 18 years old and I'm a youth activist. So I'm passionate about education reform and also nation building. So I'm also an ambassador of Project 57, part of my movement and currently intern in only 18. Why does Vision need more young leaders in politics? Because of right now, we don't even have a young leader or even a young, lead, uh, yeah, young leader in politics or even in parliament. We only have one, um, which is, um, I would say, why be sided? But it was just like before this, I mean, before this government, before the current government. So that's why we need more. Doesn't mean that we want to have a balance in the parliament where 50% is young generation and 50% is not no that's not what we ask for what we ask for is actually we need more young representative in politics and parliament and why does we need that is because of for example for only 18 bill you know not because of why besides study the parliament you know the bill wouldn't pass in day one in day one right yet and also the day one and not if not because of Saik Sadiq, we don't have the major future leader school where a new um, camp for uh, form three form four and form five students where we change from PRK into MFL and is a good thing where the youth itself they have a more a lot more chance a lot more chances a lot more opportunities to go far and then to explore what's going on in the country you know our nation buildings Look back at what um, Syed Sadiq has experienced before. It's not because of they are not mature enough, but because of people are not ready yet to accept what the Syed Sadiq in the parliament. People are not ready yet to accept the younger generation to take the role and be in the decision making position. It's not because we are not mature. And I think talking about Either the young, either the youth uh, in metro, either the youth is lack of, um, yeah, lack of um, uh, education or so on. I think let's talk about what they are going through in their daily basic life, you know, such as if you go to school, even though politics is sensitive, but somehow we are, we are actually talking about politics. You know, for example, if you say that the young generation is immature enough when you're already 18 you can do an internship when you're already 18 you have to pay taxes if you're already 18 you can take a driving license so how come you want to say that when you are 18 you can't be eligible enough to vote and you can't be a leader or you can't be in the decision making position so i have to ask back <laughs> is it we are not mature enough or the people are not ready yet, or the other politicians are not ready yet to accept us to be in the parliament. So, because you're not giving us, you, you know, we don't even, you are not giving us the opportunity yet. You're not even, you're not giving us the chances yet. So, how can you just simply say that we are not mature enough? Because at least give us once to try, you know, let us be in the issue making position, and only you can, you know, do any conclusion or judgment for, for us, right? Talking about political literacy and knowledge in school, uh, right now, politics is too sensitive in school. We can't even put politician names into our ECs. We can't even talk about politics into our SM people. In, you know, we can't even write their names in our SM people. You know, so these kind of things um, we need to dem- we need to demolish first. You know, we need to end first, then only we can talk about politics. During my four four years, um, for my Bahasa Melayu papers, I got half marks of my papers because I wrote about what's going on in our country. I didn't even wrote uh, my point of view as a political, I mean, politic, politics point of view. I don't even wrote something into politics. I don't need some, I don't even wrote about um, this the situation at that time at that moment I just wrote about how our how people actually put their I mean put their expression how people take seriously on one MVP issues you know how suddenly the one MVP issues went viral so I just talk about that I just thought like you know 
this we need their energy to speak up about other issue as well. So that's the only thing that I love bit more. Not not about YMDB, not about the um, our former prime minister, which is Satoshi Najib. No, I'm not talk about them actually. I'm just talk about how we need that kind of energy. We need that Malaysian, you know, our Malaysian people to actually. All the Malaysians, the the kind of energy to talk about other topic as well. That that that's the only thing I do. But I got half of my half marks for my paper, even though my card, even though my essay is so good. No, I'm just joking. No, I just like even though my essay is quite good, but because of like, I talk about something um something that relate to politics. So that's why I got half mark, and then my teacher said that. You cannot talk about politics. It's sensitive, and if you do this on your spam, you will definitely get zero points. So I was like, "Wow, is it? Um, we need to end this." So the government should realize that there are so many students right now are talking about politics. You know, every day, every day when when we go to school, we talk about politics. You know, when you um, when you learn about. Our beloved country. When you learn about our country, when you learn about our prime minister, it's actually about politics. When you learn about they were not yet. When you learn about they were not it's actually politics. When you complain about the government um, didn't do so, didn't do good enough, you're actually talking about politics, right? And you know something happened to me when I I been actively active on in politics. Actually, I received a call from Minister of Education and say that if I didn't stop what I'm doing right now, I couldn't even say for my SPM papers, and that's happened. That's what happened to me, and I realized that at that moment, if you guys really want to beat me for my SPM papers, if you guys really want to expel me for my SPM papers, just do it. I, I was like, at the end of the moment, I don't want to keep talking what I'm trying to, you know, what I think is right. I will do whatever, whatever I think is right. You need to ask back the Ministry of Education and end the stigma and don't just stop people talking about politics and don't stop people to just, you know, if they really want to go and do something in politics, just go ahead. The education system actually bully us nowadays. Uh, people keep memorizing names, numbers that they don't even have to know. People keep students keep, you know, playing your games. How many A's that you can get? How many A's that you can collect? They are actually bully the students to become a robot. It's like a machine. You know, you learn, then you memorize, and then you spill it in papers. But you don't even know what you're actually learning. You're just learning for the sake of the paper, for the exam, right? That's not fair. So our education system, we need to change our education system, and that is something that the youth nowadays are asking for, and we are requesting for from the government to change the education system and make it something more human, uh, because we are not robots. Protests can be changed in our country because even though. The first protest. We have a lot of protests in our country. Uh, for this year, the first protest, um, the Kimpunan Undi Lapan Belas, um, where we are doing a protest, and there's a lot of uh, youth NGOs um, been there, and there's a lot of um, youth women um, take in charge of this protest, and I am the one who give a st- media statement. During that protest, you know, two days after my SPM paper, uh, after I finished my SPM papers, and uh, I gave a media statement regarding about this protest, and I really want to show that to the government, to the not just the government, but to the whole country, that the youth are really taking this issue seriously, and this met- and the Undi 18 bill should pass. You know, it's already passed. But the UD18 bill should be implemented by September 2021. Towards 
the people that we love is actually when we have nothing, we give them everything. So same goes in our country. We don't have anything, but we want to give everything. We don't have money. We attend a protest. We don't have money, but we try to find a solution to buy a data, to buy data for internet so that we can spread the awareness, you know, to help those who are in need while knowing that we don't have any money, you know, to do a movement and asking for funding, for funding from the funders, you know, to approach the entrepreneurs and then ask them for help. You know, this is where the love is beyond of everything. The love between the country, the love that you have in your heart and you want to change. But because of what happened right now, doesn't mat- doesn't mean that your love is not important, doesn't mean that your love doesn't mean anything. It means everything to the country.